in many ways, the artist's materials are uh, what uh, the, the, the musical notes are for a composer. Um, the artist uh, brings together a disparate uh, group of materials, um, assembles them into a composition, and what we see of that composition is on the canvas. Um, and just the same way that a conductor's job is to take this set of notes um, and uh, make some sense of the unruly orchestra, um, a restorer's job is to uh, take this set of materials, which has uh, gone through a lot of transformations uh, since it was applied by the artist, and make some sense of it. As conservators, we have a variety of, of, of tools that have been adapted um, to, to, to tell us about, um, to give us clues uh, about what the artist may have had in, in mind uh, when he was, when he was uh, creating a particular image. This is the, the Farewell of Telemachus and Eucharist, which was painted by uh, Jacques-Louis David in 1818 when he was working in exile in Brussels. We're looking at a detail of the painting with a technique called infrared reflectography, which involves taking a camera that has been equipped with an infrared sensitive tube and seeing the reflective abilities of different materials, different pigments uh, in the infrared light range. If we take a close look at this area of the painting, uh, when we look at it with infrared, what we see is that David went to the trouble uh, to block in the, the figure in the nude um, underneath the drapery and then to literally clothe him. David was trained as an academic painter. Academic painters in France were trained from a very young age to draw and study the nude. Uh, and one of the reasons you do that is so that you can get a real sense of form. Um, not just the surface of the skin, but the bone and the muscle that's underneath. When you walk through the galleries, there are a couple of things that you're not aware of. One is the fact that the the picture has a history. It has a history from the time that it left the easel, uh, when all sorts of things began to happen to it. This is a painting by an early 19th century German painter named Caspar David Friedrich, uh, who's an extremely rare artist in this country. When I first saw the painting uh, at the auction house, uh, it was in a, in, in a somewhat disheveled state. Um, it had a, a fairly discolored varnish on the surface. And uh, more, more importantly, it had a large hole um, in, in this part of the painting. What I did do was to re repair the hole from the back, um, glue some new pieces of fabric just to the edges of the painting, which allowed me to restretch it onto the stretcher. And then I had prepared the stretcher with yet another piece of fabric. And then the whole package was put back together um, so that from the front, you really can't tell that anything has happened. So the, the, the challenge in the restoration was to, to take care of the, um, the, the structural anomalies, this hole in the sky, um, but to, to do the work in such a way that, that my presence would be as, as uh, invisible uh, as possible, um, so that all that was left uh, in the end was the artist's voice speaking to you uh, directly. We have been able to look at this uh, painting with infrared reflectography, and underneath the surface is an extraordinarily elaborate plan these trees in the distance, which have a kind of misty uh, quality, were laid in in very elaborate, precise detail. And then uh, the paint actually played the role of the mist. Imagine um, a late uh, afternoon, early evening, when the, the, the mist begins to rise from the fields. Um, Friedrich literally laid in the mist, laid in the paint the same way that the mist would have traveled into the field. And that's one of the reasons that this uh, illusion of a tree uh, in the mist in the distance compared to the, the clarity of the tree in the foreground is, is so successful because um, he's used the paint almost to imitate uh, the natural progression of, of the atmosphere. What appears to be the, the, the essence of simplicity and purity is often the result of a tremendous uh, wrestle uh, and, and struggle with materials. Um, Paint is a very unruly and difficult uh, substance to handle, and it's very hard to make it do what you want it to do. And one of the reasons that artists are such geniuses um, is because they're able to take um, a virtually um, uh, uh, unmanageable material and make sense of it, uh, make it speak, uh, make it say something, uh, and reflect um, uh, some inner beliefs and feelings that they, that they have. And that's, that's, a, that's a tremendous um, skill and talent and gift, um, which is why we, we appreciate these things uh, today.